all across Morris County, built resources lend critical insight into the cultural history of place, significant and distinct markings left to tell the story of the people who came before. But in a world that focuses more on tomorrow than yesterday and time is money, structures that are old, outdated, and required rehabilitation are often seen as only a hindrance to progress. It's an unfortunate fact of life for every historian and structural preservationist. For an organization who, for the last 75 years, mission has been to preserve and promote Morris County history, well, this also now includes built history. This program will introduce our newest collection, the Morris County Architectural Study Collection, provide background for its establishment, show examples of what, is curr what it currently includes, and illustrate goals for continued growth and diversification. MCHS has been collecting objects from local demolished structures for decades, but it was more of a haphazard mix of objects, some labeled, some not. More recently, however, a threatened property was located just down the street from Acorn Hall. A very real and growing issue had literally arrived at our front door. Formally established in 2020, the Morris County Architectural Study Collection preserves character-defining architectural features from demolished or significantly altered historic structures. We use the Secretary of the Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties for the definition of historic. The first of its kind collection in New Jersey, if not beyond, here are some examples of the amazing structural resources we now have in our collection. So yes, it was a small stick-built cottage that was once located down the street that got the whole concept rolling. Seen here in the 1868 Beers Atlas, the cottage was located on the property of Dr. J.S. Dodge, dentist. At the time the house was built, only five other structures stood between it and Acorn Hall. Today, there are 17. Exemplifying techniques common to the common carpenter Gothic style, the cottage was constructed nearly two generations before the influx of millionaires and stood to remind passers-by of a simpler time. Prior to demolition, we worked with the very generous homeowners to receive the pointed gable windows and uh, roof brackets. Last year, we received a call from a property owner who was told he needed to check with us because of the historic nature of the building he intended to demolish, just to make sure that it was okay. A short conversation later, and we had our earliest rep represented structure in the collection, dated 1725. Featuring characteristics common in the Dutch architecture of New Jersey, we were able to collect the, the, the small three-paned casement windows on the second floor, original and later edition gable end windows, marble fireplace facades, as well as part of the main stairs, including railings and newel posts. This is the site today. While the exact history of 30 Newark Pompton Turnpike is currently being researched, we know that the immediate area represented a small colony of early Dutch settlers. A 1936 HAB survey of the Colfax House, located mere steps from our home, illustrates that, while not exact, heavily Dutch-influenced architecture was common. The Colfax House was built in 1696, but was demolished in the latter 20th century. Built between 1805 and 1829, the Isaac Pearson home was built in the Georgian tradition. As seen in the 1911 Mueller Atlas, the home was also located on the Otto Kahn estate, Cedar Court, one of the most opulent and grand estates of the Gilded Age here in the local area. In 1937, Cedar Court structures were demolished and in 1942, the property was sold to Allied Chemical and Dye, which merged with Honeywell in 1999. When Honeywell sold the property, the area was developed in stages. 99 Columbia was demolished in 2016. MCHS was able to take wrought iron fencing as well as main receptacle for the servant call system. This is 99 Columbia today. One of our more recent acquisitions, the history of this 19th century post office is still waiting to be uncovered. We know that it was built to serve the, the nuns of St. Elizabeth Convent and the young women of the Academy of St. Elizabeth. Founded in 1860 as the Academy of St. Elizabeth was the first secondary school for women in New Jersey. While details seen in this high resolution black and white photo indicate there is a story, it's hoped that pending research will uncover a great deal more, all to be interpreted as part of this building's story. But this fall, students starting their secondary or collegiate career at the Academy or University of St. Elizabeth 
will never know that for nearly 50 years, students, several generations before them, utilized the post, post office that once stood here to keep in touch with their loved ones. MCHS now holds the barred front door with its well-worn hardware, as well as original gas lamp and double hung windows with their security bars in our collection. But our architectural study collection isn't just about buildings. A lot of the built environment includes how we travel in addition to how we live. In 1909, the trolley arrived in Morristown to great fanfare. While initial service had started in Dover five years prior, the system was subsequently expanded east and west to serve the citizens of Morris County. The Morris County Traction Company was led by local millionaire, financier, and statesman Robert D. Foote of Morris Township. His stately 44-room Georgian Revival Mansion, Springbrook House, still stands. Purchased by the Jesuits in 1927, it's operated as a Loyola Jesuit Center and remains largely unchanged since it was built in 1904. The trolley served as a sweet spot in American history when the automobile was on the rise, but yet not part of the average household. In 1920, the company ran 42 trolleys and carried 7.7 .7 million passengers over 4.2 million miles. But the traction line was beset with troubles, crashes were common, snow clearing during the winter proved an issue, and as cars became increasingly more popular and buses replaced trolley routes, ridership plummeted. The last trolley ran on February 4th, 1928. Buses then fully took over the route. While the tracks and power lines are long gone, remnants of the line's route can still be found on Morris County Park Commission's Traction Line Recreational Trail, and we maintain a near seven foot section of track. So that's a brief look at some of the resources we have. Next is where they'll soon be installed and exhibited. MCHS is currently restoring Acorn Hall's 1853 Carriage House, a utilitarian structure the building's second floor primarily served as hay storage during Augustus Crane's tenure, when the property functioned as a gentleman's farm. In open space with ample room, upon completion of the restoration, the Carriage House's second floor is set to become the new home of the study collection. Curated similarly to all our exhibits, aspects of Morris County's built and structural history will live on in this space for years to come. We've yet to have a single negative reaction from a property owner or developer. In fact, everyone has been happy to learn that part of their historic building will be saved. For more information on Morris County Historical Society, tours of Acorn Hall, or our architectural study collection, please contact us. Thank you.